It's another gorgeous day down on the allotment. I managed to get down here for about an hour. And today I'm doing planting. I'm planting beetroot and spinach. Beetroot's going in the polytunnel because I want as early a crop as possible. But I don't need that much in here because it's only for the early crop. So it's only for the sort of period through early May, June, and maybe into early July. And then the main crop will be uh, uh, already outside and then the storage crop will follow on from that. So that's the beetroot and the spinach is going outside under a cloche. And this cloche actually is the first thing I think I ever made on the allotment. And I wasn't very happy with it, but it served me well over the years. So let's take a look. So here's today's little babies. Beautiful red kitten spinach. I absolutely adore this spinach. I mean, it tastes nice, but the, I just love the look of it. And obviously it's, you know, still tiny little leaves now, so you don't really get the full effect of the red veins on it. But uh, it is gorgeous once it matures. And then some of the little old hardy beetroot. Now these are a bit leggy, as you can see, but you just plant them deep. It's no problem at all. Leggy beetroot is nothing to be ashamed of or worried of, worried about rather. So I'll just show you where I'm going to put them. So the beetroot is going to be interplanted into this spinach bed. I'm going to fill the whole bed. I've already got radish interplanted in here and then Brussels sprouts for leaves interplanted in there. Spring onions down here, cauliflowers, calabrese. So quite a lot in that bed. So this bed was all carrots. Just got a few left down there. And then we switch on to our spring crop in a couple of weeks time. And that's all nice and cozy under a coal frame. Really the coal frame's only purpose was so that we could harvest when the ground was frozen. Anyway, ground prep here. I've just obviously weeded it then I put down probably about a quarter to a half handful of um, poultry pellets and then about the same again of uh, what's it called now hoof and horn so not very much really but obviously then I mulched it with this spent mushroom compost so there's enough nitrogen in that combination for spinach and then I'll give it a little bit more of a feed when the cabbages go in here once the spinach is finished. So I'm very pleased with these little modules. The plants are slightly leggy. I always find this with beetroot. Uh, they really want to grow really cool and I just don't, at home, I don't have anywhere cool enough for them. Um, so they're always just a little bit leggy, but it doesn't matter, you just plant them just that little bit deeper and just sort of settle them in like that and they're absolutely fine. So these are batch 116. They were planted on the 21st of January and it's the 18th today so um yeah so they're just just under a month old which is kind of perfect really that's the time i like to get them in anyway i'm gonna get sewing into my dipped holes i've given them about six inches uh on the row and about eight inches uh, so in the row and eight inches between the rows so I'm happy with those. I just had one plant that just had a little bit of mould on the roots and that just broke off as I was removing it from the uh, tray. Now I have got plenty of spinach. This is red kitten and I think this is a mix of America and giant winter as well as the beds in the polytunnel. I've got one more bed as well that I've been interplanting the radishes and the turnips into and I did a video on that a few days ago. Uh, so I've got a lot of beds of spinach but the thing is that will all start to progressively go to seed. So I've got a few successions there. The first one that I showed you is the youngest bed so that will go to seed last and then the ones in the polytunnel will go to seed first probably and then the ones um, in the other coal frame go to seed second and then by then hopefully that new bed that I've just planted will be at its peak in terms of growth and I'm not too worried about these beds going to seed because they're all interplanted and so 
as soon as those they start to go to seed the leaf quality starts to reduce then I'll whip those plants out and pop some new uh, well I've got some new interplanted plants coming through so no, no worries about that there I have got a little ebook as well about growing uh, spinach in general but specifically about growing it all year round different varieties to use different spinach substitutes to use at different times of year sometimes true spinach is the perfect thing to grow sometimes asian spinach sometimes things like field beans for the leaves are absolutely amazing um, and sometimes new zealand spinach so you know just a range of different spinaches get you through the year with kind of you know real peak um, the, the crops that are absolutely perfect for that time of year so i've dipped 16 holes for the spinach and not the spinach for the beetroot and i think i've got about three in each module so that's 48 beetroot that's about right for the early crop and these are also just under a month old Again, just slightly leggy, but again, that's no issue at all. So there they go. You can hardly see them actually, but uh, it's worth mentioning that when spinach starts to go to seed, the plants start to rise up, and that's actually when I'll clear this bed. So you could leave that spinach quite a lot longer once it starts the process of, of going to seed. Um, but in my case, I won't do that because I, I want to create space for the beetroot. So I would expect this will own the spinach will only be in here for another three or four weeks. Uh, by which time, you know, this beetroot will really need the space, and uh, then I'll just snip the beetroot, the uh, spinach off at the roots, and uh, then the beetroot will have loads of space then to grow on. So it's going to be very windy over the next few days, so a cloche isn't enough. So I've put this little bit of um, perspex or whatever it is uh, at the end there, just a couple of little fence pins pushed through there just to hold it in place. And I'll just leave the other end open to uh, make sure that the uh, plants have got loads of ventilation. And they look pretty nice in there. And the only other job I had to do today was watering and I gave the polytunnel its first water since the middle of December. So it's middle of February now, so that's been two months without water. The ground was pretty good actually, um, but I kind of felt like it was time. And there was a nice wind blowing, it's nice and sunny. So I thought, uh, yeah, it was a good day to give it its first water. And there's the carrots that I pulled out to make way for the spinach. I do like storing carrots in the ground. And there's the carrots for spring. Looking great. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.